Ladies and gentlemen, and I thank you for being present today on this very auspicious occasion. And can I on your behalf at last welcome Madame Rajavi to this august building which has meant so much for human rights and for nations working together. Madame Rajavi, it's a delight to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, I was shocked, as I've no doubt you were, when the news of Camp Ashraf massacre of September the 1st reached us. And, and I was equally disturbed by the video footage that followed. And you only need to look at these horrific pictures to know what the forces of Iraq did the people who were told they would be protected under the Fourth Geneva Convention. And this is what we call protection? I think not, and I know you think not too, who for so long have been a beacon of freedom in their own country. I realize now that I see the bodies lying out there, massacred, shot from close range, many of them handcuffed, and others while they were being treated in the camp's clinic after they were attacked by machine gun, others gunned down in the very act of delivering mercy. The assassins even shot those in the clinic who were trying to treat the wounded in this criminal attack. A scene forever lodged in my memory, and I'm sure yours. And that scene truly reveals the bravery of those individuals who simply wanted to help their fellow man and woman. In an act that constitutes a crime against humanity. And all that our governments did was to condemn these brutal killings instead of undertaking specific steps to bring the culprits to justice calling upon the Iraqi government to launch an inquiry into the bloodbath in Ashraf is quite frankly farcical. It is utterly naive to expect the perpetrators of these crimes to carry out an impartial investigation into their own conduct. I believe that the fact that our governments and the UN broadcast sent out such weak signals over the years to Iraq uh, uh, and as a consequence, I believe the Iraqi forces at the behest of the Iranian regime carried out these atrocities convinced that they could get away with it. What a tragedy for humankind that is. As I speak, seven uh, uh, Ashrafis, including six women, who were abducted during the recent massacre are being held as hostages in a prison in Iraq which is under the control of the Iraqi Prime Minister's special forces. Knowing what the Iranian regime is capable of in terms of torture and execution, I fear for the lives of those seven brave Ashrafis who also face the threat of extradition to Iran, which would be a clear breach, a clear breach of international law. I therefore make the following demands of my own government and the member states of the European Council. I demand that the US government and the UN take effective measures regarding the condition of the hostages and take steps to secure their immediate release. Furthermore, very decisive diplomatic and ec economic pressures should be applied by the government of Iraq. I demand that the UN monitoring team and the UN Blue Helmet forces should be stationed inside Camp Liberty at all hours of the day in order to prevent another massacre by Iraqi forces at the behest of the Iranian regime. I demand that protective gear should be delivered to Camp Liberty residents and the 17,500 T-walls used to protect the containers in which those residents live should be restored in order to guarantee their protection 
from missile and mortar attacks which has claimed so many lives over the past year. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> It is now my absolute pleasure to uh, introduce, although she needs no introduction, Madame Rajon.